used to sing a song just simply hallelujah, hallelujah over and over again. And uh, somebody looking on might say, why would they even bother to do that? Because he deserves it so much. Just to say hallelujah over and over and over again. He deserves it, amen. And I think that we sing it sometimes. I just can't praise him enough, just don't thank him enough. And I think when we get there and see what all he's prepared for us, all we'll be able to do then is just up the praise, amen, because we have a new body to do it with. But I feel like we fell so short of those praise, and our praise don't seem like much sometimes, you know. But I have nothing else fit for a king, amen. I have nothing else I could offer. Real serious message tonight. Seems like it ought to be a Sunday morning message, but I'm not one that tells God when I'm supposed to preach what I'm supposed to preach. Amen. I just listen to him. Amen. Read a long scripture text this morning. I only have one verse tonight. The title of the message tonight, they were not ready for what Jesus told them. Question mark, are you? Amen. Are we ready? I think sometimes we ask Jesus about things in our life and so many times we're not even ready for the answer that he gives us, you know. It's not what we want to hear. I've heard people even make jokes about it and say, call back up there and say, is anybody else I can talk to and things like that? But he's it. There's no other higher power. There's nobody else that you can talk to. And if you don't like what he says, I'm telling you, then all you have to do is just either repent Worship him, whatever you want to do tonight, but he is the final authority. He is the life. He is the way, the truth, and the light. He is his son. One verse of scripture from Matthew 24, verse 3. I know this is preached a lot. Maybe I don't preach it very much, but anyway, I'm doing what God asked me to do tonight. Matthew 24 and 3, just one verse of scripture. It says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples, came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world amen notice that he said they came to him privately maybe they thought they'd get an inside scoop you know that maybe they'd know a little more than other people knew but what he told them he declared that they should write it down for us amen and so I believe tonight that we need to know a little bit about what the signs of thy coming and the end of the world because I can tell you today that it is winding up. It is going to end real soon, soon and very soon. They were not ready for what Jesus told them. Explanation point, are you? Question mark. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the day that is at hand, Lord. I, I listen to people talking about the good old days and Mama, Grandpa, Grandma, tell me about the good old days. But, Lord, I'm glad I'm alive right now in the center of your wheel, Lord, tonight, preaching this gospel, a little country church, not a big crowd. Hopefully we picking up some on the streamline, Lord. Maybe they'll text in and let us know they're there. Maybe we're doing a greater work than we realize tonight. But I think this is a message that needs to be heard from our house to the White House. Amen to the Lord's house that the Lord is coming soon I've been listening to a song lately that said coming soon Jesus in all of his glory amen that's how he's coming back again Lord I'm looking forward to that day I realize that there's a lot of loved ones a lot of my loved ones that are lost and done without God a lot of our close relatives that we're not sure where they stand with God God, I pray that this message, if any are listening tonight, this will be a, a warning, yet uh, some instruction tonight that we better get ready because Tommy Gale sings that song a lot, used to sing it a lot. Ready or not, the Lord is coming. He won't want to wait on you to get ready. When the time comes, he will come, the Bible said, and will not tarry. I'm looking forward to that day. Get ready and go with us to meet the King. He is coming. In Jesus' name, amen. Shake hands, wave at somebody, do whatever you're at liberty to do tonight. And we thank you so much. Wonderful song. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Not much, but it's all I can give. That's all I have fit for a king is just praise and honor to his name tonight. 
He sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the Bible, this is a real familiar scripture. If there's any familiar scripture in the church world, it ought to be this, Matthew 24, that tells of his coming. Before I could read, my mama sang the song to me, sitting on her knee that said, we are living, surely living in the days he speaks about. Amen. In the book of Matthew 24. Amen. And I, I, I wanted to know more about that. As I've grown up uh, and, and turned into my senior years, I have not found out all I want to know about this. I just know that he's coming again. Hallelujah. I hear the voice of the Lord. Joy is coming in the morning. Joy come for the saints of God when he returns. I don't think that they had any awareness of what Jesus was going to tell them when he asked them these two questions. What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? I, I don't think they thought that his coming was thousands of years away at the present time when he was there. I think that they thought that he talked about it so much that they thought he would probably come in their lifetime, some of them, that they'd see him split the sky. But they preached the word and they died in the faith. Hebrews 11 said, not having received the promise, amen. But they, they laid hold on it and they, they longed for it and they knew they would someday. But they believed he would come again. And at that moment, they couldn't wait for the day. They wanted him to come. They thought, you're about to be crucified. Uh, our relationship with you is going to change. And we wish you'd just come on back now. In fact, for a matter of fact, they probably said, I wish you wouldn't go. Amen. I wish you'd just stay with us while you're here. But he had to do the plan of God and the will of God. I don't think they had any idea of the horror that would precede his coming. That's why I said I don't think they were ready for what Jesus told them. And I think sometimes we're not ready for it neither. Amen. We want him to come. Surely we do. Amen. Surely, I think that's the only thing that will fix all of our problems is for our Lord to come back to earth again. Amen. And I believe he is coming. And I believe the disciples that were close to God sat there and listened to these words. And it doesn't seem to uh, allude to the fact that they asked any more questions. They just they sat there in wonder and amazement probably at the things that he told them that would come to pass before our Lord comes back to earth again. The very things that he talked about in verse 4 through verse 8 uh, was horrifying to them, and I'm sure that they had no idea of what he was about to say. He answered unto them and said, Take heed that no man deceive you. In verse 4. Verse 5, he said, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. We've seen that in our lifetime and we've heard of it down through the eons of time. Verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That verse uh, speaks volumes to me in verse 6, and he said, See to it that ye be not troubled. See that ye be not troubled. We have a responsibility to make sure that we're not going to let the cares of this life weighed us down so much that we are worried and burdensome and troubled so much about what's coming because he told us it was coming. Amen. He said there'd be wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet. <clears throat> for nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. They had heard a little bit about that. I'm sure they wasn't anticipating all that. Amen. That was coming to pass. They had seen a lot in their lifetime. Some of them were different ages, I feel like, but they had seen things in their lifetime. But he said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Amen. It's just fixing to get bad. Amen. That's what he was saying. It's just fixing to turn uh, uh, down in your life. Amen. And if you were looking for a bright line here, he didn't give it to you here. He, in fact, he takes away from it and says, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. He began to tell them people being deceived. I, I think we see that today. It hadn't changed a whole lot 
Uh, you know, the more it's changed, the more it stayed the same. But there's a lot of people being deceived today. When you listen to people talk about their religion and what they worship and what they believe, you think, my Lord, how can people be so deceived, amen, in this life? But he said there would be people being deceived. There would be wars and rumors of war. And the end is not yet. Nation shall uh, come against the nation, kingdom against kingdom. And that had been all through the Old Testament. They had seen that. But he told them this is going to amplify, and it will get worse as the day of the Lord approaches. Amen. Famines, people starving to death, pestilence, things there's no cure for, don't have any answer for it, earthquakes in diverse places. Amen. And then a very stiff warning to them and said all these are the beginning of sorrows amen then it begins to amplify in verse 9 through 14 maybe i'll read some more and then maybe preach a little bit in a moment amen just obey the lord it begins to amplify amplify if you got your bibles open verse 9 through 14 then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and they shall kill you and shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We've seen that more in my lifetime, I think, than probably in the years before. Amen. All the things that's come to pass, even religious people and religious things find out they hate us. Amen. And they'll, uh, you know, take our planes and, and kill, massacre a lot of people. That's old news. That's 20 years ago. But no telling what we're going to wake up to in the morning on the news, what we'll see in the morning they'll deliver you up to be afflicted shall kill you and you shall be hated all nations for my name's sake and this shall many be offended and they shall betray one another and shall hate one another i'm telling you it almost seems like in the church there's a lot of hatred going on you know uh people that won't even go back to the church won't even go to church with the same people anymore you know they just despise one another and think they're doing the will of God. He said in verse 11, and many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. We wonder in amazement why so many people are deceived, but we yet we know this because all the false teachings and all the false doctrines and all the false prophets that are there today. And then he, uh, a, a, a sobering note in verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because sin is on the scene. Because uh, the devil uh, defeated Adam and Eve. And sin come on the scene back then. And uh, it has only got worse. And he said, because iniquity abounds in the day that precedes his coming, the love of many shall wax cold. But he tells us that whosoever shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. I'm telling you, that's why we preach hold on. That's why we sing songs that says hold on. That's why we tell people in their darkest hour just to hold on because uh, there's a brighter day coming. Amen. Must be faithful all the way. It's going to be worth it all someday because he said he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. If you got red letter edition, it's all in red letters. This was Jesus talking. This is the God and this, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. It'll happen. Amen. It'll happen. It'll happen. It'll have how will it happen? Just like he said. It'll come back just like he said. And this gospel of this kingdom shall be preached in all the world and the witness to all nations and then shall the end come. Amen. Amen. I'm longing for that day, aren't you? I mean, uh, I can see the light in the window. Amen. I, I know that this world has been a wilderness, and we're all ready for deliverance tonight. But this is when it will happen, when the Word of God gets preached to every nation, to all the world, to witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. We don't have a date. I'm telling you, he didn't give us a date here, but he gave us a season of time. When the word had been preached, so many people are against the true word of God, don't want to hear it, don't want to hear what God has to say. But when the word has been preached, things are now closing in on that day. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that 
over the next hill might be home. I believe that uh, we can almost see the lights of home. In light of recent events that's happened in the world, I think it's fitting that we take time to look at what the Bible has to say about the world we are living in and all that is taking place. The Bible gives us a picture of the world in which we live. When he paints this picture of how it's going to be, I think we ought to just look around and say it's here. It's all around us. Amen. We're living in the day that Matthew 24 talks about. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The things we see happening today are not so surprising to the believer. We've waited for many years to see this thing wind up. You remember, Momo and I took it as a little bit of a joke, but and I think she was kidding with me. I think she heard what he said. But the day the doctor told her that she had vertigo, she asked me when we got out of the hospital, she said, did he tell me I didn't have vertigo? And when, you know, people laugh at that, but I, I told her, and, and I wasn't laughing, but I told her, I said, you ought to hug his neck and said, I'm looking for somebody to tell me this thing's about over, amen, that I don't have fur to go, amen. I'm looking for that, amen. And I believe she was, and she got to the place that there wasn't no turning around. She kept telling her family she was going home, and she did go home, amen, to a heavenly home, amen. Praise the Lord. We could look at the world and be frightened at what we see tonight. But if you know Jesus and are looking for his coming, then everything we see only adds excitement to the days in which we live right now. You can know you are way down and saved an old wretched sinner like I was, amen, and gave me a new life. As we watch the news lately in the ongoing war between Hamas and Israel, I was looking at it the other day, and it was just awful. And the things that was happening as they tallied the scores up, how many dead on each side, and all the trouble, and how they showed people being taken captive, and, captive, and uh, you know, and they, 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 the news reporter said, I promise you this is not encouraging, this is not enlightening what you're about to see. And I knew it wasn't no movie. I knew it was a real thing. So I sat there to watch a little bit of it. Uh, uh, leaders taken out of families and families crying after them while they put bags over their head and led them away. I'm telling you, we we live in a, a, a place where we think that would never happen over here, but we don't hardly even know who our enemies are anymore. Somebody say amen. And the, the Bible gives us a picture of all this taking place. Amen. The Bible tells us that it's coming. Hallelujah. As we watch the news lately, as I said, about the things going on, it'll make you afraid or happy. It'll make you afraid that, oh, Lord, they're coming to get us. Amen. It won't be long till it'll be over in America, and I wouldn't be surprised at that. I'm serious tonight. But it would make you happy if you know who in whom you believe. Amen. Afraid if you're not saved, happy if you are. Amen. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. I'm happy. Jesus warns us of the rise and falls of, of, of people that they even declarate as God himself and find out they, the graveyard's full of those and none of them saved their people yet, but there's one coming to save us. Amen. Riding on the clouds of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. He tells us that many will come in his name claiming to be the Messiah and will see many. This is a stark reminder for us, for me and you, to be discerning and test everything against the truth of God's Word. We ought to weigh everything out. Amen. Somebody might tell you something sounds real good sometimes just because you want to hear it. That's called tickling of the ear. People have an itching ear, want to hear certain things. But if you can't line it up with this Word of God, you better throw it away just as quick as you can get your hands off of it. I don't mean to be mean, but Jehovah Witnesses gives out paperwork. They give it to me. I don't think nothing of it. I get rid of it. Amen. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There was a man in the doctor's office the other day. Not that I was I was real respectful of him. He walked up. I was sitting there looking at something, a book or something. And he said, sir, said, can I give you something? And I looked over there, and he only had one arm, and he was out. 
uh, giving out tracts there in the doctor's office. And I said, sure. And I took it and talked about the salvation plan. And I thought to myself, it's wonderful. I know I'm already saved. I didn't throw that away. I put it there where people be looking for the books. Maybe somebody see that. They need to hear that Jesus does save today. He still saves. He's still saving to the uttermost and to the guttermost and reaching way down like he has always done. Amen. Like Paul said, he was chief among sinners. He's looking for some chiefs among sinners tonight. His blood will take care of your sins tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We could look at this world and be frightened by what we see. But if you know Jesus and are looking for his coming, then everything we see only adds excitement to the days in which we live. You can know you're saved. You can be glad of it. Amen. You can worry about the things that's happening all around you, but you can do as First Peter 5 and 7 says, casting all your care on him because he cares for you. And just don't worry about it anymore. Everything's going to be all right. Praise the Lord. We must be careful not to be swayed by the charismatic leaders or convincing arguments that deviate from the truth of the gospel. This is a sign that we must be vigilant for as it is clear indication of the times leading up to Jesus' return. We better weigh everything with the word of God. Jesus speaks of wars and rumors of war nations against nations. This is a sobering thought, but it's important to remember that Jesus tells us not to be alarmed by these things. Hallelujah. His exact words there was uh, in, in verse 9, I believe, see to it. Or in the scripture there, see to it that you be not overcome with this. See to it that your heart's not troubled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are signs, yes, but they are not cause for fear. Rather, they are reminders that this world is not our home. And we're waiting for the return of the king. Amen. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. Hallelujah. He's coming in great power. Oh, hell, that blessed hour. We shall see the king when he comes. Jesus mentions famines and earthquakes in various places. These natural disasters are tragic and cause much suffering. We've heard on the news in the last week or so about earthquakes and volcanoes and those things that you and I don't have any control about, and they will continue until the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. But they are also a part of the birth pains leading to the return of Christ. They are reminders of the brokenness of our world and the need, hear me, for the restoration that will come when Jesus returns. You know what the Bible says? When he that is perfect has come, that is imperfect. I'll be done away with. Amen. Aren't you excited about that? I am. You can get ready to come back to the music. I'm about through here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus speaks of the sign of the Son of Man appearing in heaven. This will be a sight to behold, a moment of awe and reverence, but also a moment of great sorrow for those who did not recognize him as their Savior when they still had time to do it. But all of a sudden, time is going to come to a screeching halt. And it'll come on up to the day of Armageddon when they built, beat their swords and weapons in the plowshares. Jesus returns with the saints for a thousand years of peace called the millennial. I want to be there, don't you? Hallelujah. I think the Bible says he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on them. But I think that the reality, we have perfect peace in Jesus. We have perfect peace in him. But I don't know if there's ever been a time in my life that the devil didn't try to worry me about something. If it wasn't my job, my money, my bills, my kids, my wife, my mom, my dad, just something all the time, there'll come a time when we won't have to worry anymore. All the worries and frets of this world and all of that would happen when he splits the eastern sky. If you're not ready tonight, I don't know if anybody here that maybe not saved, but on the streaming tonight, if you're not ready to go, you ought to seriously consider making Jesus your choice tonight. 
because he is coming again. And it could be tonight, amen. could be this very night. The truth we all know about the coming of the Lord is found in verse 36 through 44. Let me read that, and I'll be through. But of the day and hour know it no man, know not the angels of heaven, but the Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving him marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So also is the coming of the Son of Man. Then shall be two in the field, one taken, the other left. Two women be grinding at the meal, one taken, and the other left. Watch therefore. We know what he's talking about by the next line. He said, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house and knew what hour the thief would come and have watched and would not have suffered his home to be broken up. Therefore, verse 44, last verse I'll read tonight, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man come. That's when he's coming. In such an hour as you think not. This is the one thing we're confident about as disciples listen to Jesus. They were ready. I feel like they were. You know, we know about Judas, but I think basically they, in their hearts, were ready to meet him again. But the devil got involved in some of them, and it didn't turn out that way, but they were ready. If I had two words I could ask you tonight, in closing, are you? You know, this is a serious message. This seems like a, instead of a shouting message, this seems like a Sunday morning message when you ought to be talking about people getting back and saved, get right with the Lord. But the Bible said today is the day of salvation and now is the accepted time. If you lost, tonight's the time. If you reject it, you may get another one. You may not. If you feel God convicting your heart, I would that you just call and let Donnie know, I'm the one, I'm lost. I'm undone, and the Lord's coming, and I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Pray for me, and he'll pray for you, and we'll pray for you. But if you're not ready, today is the day. Today is the hour, and now is the time that we should make plans for his great coming. Amen and amen.